What's up, gang? This is Kane Zero, Kane Zero, get sick of Miller, get a video for the Twitter, and we are back on Suke Hime. Last episode, we were scrapping with that damn vampire, the Black Beast. We were scrapping with that damn vampire nigga, and I mean, he whooped our ass. He whooped our ass. He he kicked he kicked the shit out of us. But we're spinning back, I guess. It's Black Beast two. I guess we get in our revenge. Let's get into it. Fourth day, October 24th, Sunday, the Black Beast 2. I'm going to try to pronounce it right, but if, if I keep going on and the shit just sounds so, it, it just sound weird, I'm, I'm going to give up and I'm going to just say it how I want to say it. Arcuade. 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 Okay, let me see. Let me try. Arcuade's room isn't what you, that sounds so fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Oh, man. I don't like that pronunciation. Arcuade sounds so much harder. Arcuade's room isn't what you would expect for a vampire. Back then, I was only worried about Arcuade, so I didn't really notice it. But looking at it now, her room is completely ordinary. She even has a newspaper subscription. What's all that about? I grumble as I put the sleeping Arcuade on her bed. Wow! Oh, I take a deep breath as I sit on the floor. It's almost six o'clock in the morning. The sky outside the window is brightening, but really heavily la laden with the clouds. Right. I should close the curtains. I spur my tired body to stand up. I close the curtains and sit down again. Thud. As I lower myself, the strength drains from my knees and I collapse on the floor. Man, it seems like I'm exhausted too. It's pitiful, but I can't even stand. How I feel after coming back from Dragon Con. Come to think of it. I spent all I spent all last night talking with Arcue, and I didn't eat for more than a day. In addition, even though I put my glasses on, I still have a headache. My brain is ringing with this headache. Arcue, I wonder if her wound is all right. Her bleeding has stopped, and she is someone who regenerates after being sliced apart. So maybe I don't have to worry. I wonder why. Right now, I'm so exhausted I could collapse. Yet I'm more worried about Arcue than myself. What's wrong? What's wrong? Huh? Wait, what? Wait. That's a switch, okay. Investigators believe the cause of Takeda Yoichi's motorcycle accident was a malfunction in the brake paddle, which occurred while he was descending a steep hill. Fortunately, no one was killed in the accident. I wake up to a man's generic, uninflected voice. Oh, did I fall asleep? When I come to, I find myself laying on the floor under a sheet. It's about past noon. Arcuate is no longer on the bed and uninteresting news fills the room from the television. Oh, he fell asleep. I thought it was like a flashback or something. I was so confused. Oh, uh, where did Arcade go? Arcade, no. I'm Arukai, I'm gonna just say Arukai. I'm having trouble saying it right, I'm sorry. Where did Arcuade? No, I don't want to. I don't want to fuck up. I don't want to fuck up. Arcuade. Right, let me know. Let me know y'all think sound better. Arcuade, Arcuade, man. I'm, I'll, I'll figure it out next time. Where did Ar Where did Arcuade go? And I sent someone in the kitchen. That idiot moving around with such a wound. I get out from under the sheet and stand up. I have to go to the kitchen and check up on a wound. Next on the news, a massive number of people went missing in the early mornings at a hotel in Southern. Mi Mena Menamiyashirogi City. I stopped dead in my tracks. My eyes become glued to the newscast on the television set. 103 people staying at the hotel are still unaccounted for. Furthermore, bloodstains can be seen within the hotel and police are beginning to suspect that they were involved in some kind of crime. What are you saying? Bloodstains? It wasn't something that small and cute. The newscaster reads off the script with a disinterested tone. The screen switches to the scene of the hotel I stayed at earlier and then lists the names of the 103 missing people. Of course, neither my nor Ar Arcuade's, Arcuade's name are on the list. Furthermore, a large amount of wild animals' hair was found within the hotel. It is presumed that the hair is connected with the suspect in some way. Someone, some of the confirmed hair samples appear to be from a large breed of dog, wolves, and other, and also evidence of a bear. 
There were numerous different hair samples found on the scene. Ridiculously, what appeared to be a shark bite were also reported from the scene. Yeah, fucking shark bites. Yeah, I know that all too fucking well. Click. I switch off the television set. A hundred people. About a hundred people back then. In just half an hour, they were all killed brutally. Bloodstains. Unaccounted for. How can you say that when you have that much information? I understand completely. Everyone staying in the hotel was killed by those incomprehensible beasts and devoured without a trace. Ah, I resist the urge to throw up. I can't allow myself to vomit when I recall each and every event which occurred last night. Such a petty sympathy would set me lower than a filthy pig. For me, the only one who is for me, the only one who escaped death in that hotel, I won't allow anything else to, else other than hatred for the one all behind, from the one behind it all. A hundred people, a hundred people killed without even leaving their bodies behind, only blood. The face of the man in the black coat surfaces in my mind. I don't know who he is, but it is no mistake to think he's behind everything that happened. Is my heart still numb? Right now, hatred wins out over fear and disgust. Or maybe even the feelings whirling, whirling within inside my chest is just another kind of fear. That's just ridiculous. I grit my teeth. I don't know if it is regret or fear, or maybe an unpleasant rep revulsion. But just recalling the face of the man in the black coat makes me want to break something and irritates me. You're awake, Shiki? Arakai pokes her head out of the kitchen. Oh. What is it? Making such a scary face. Did something happen? Arakai speaks lightly as if nothing happened at all. All right, bitch. Emotionless. Fucking no heart, no soul ass. The feelings which were welling forth inside of me all just until now until just now disappear. Arcuade, is your wound okay? Yes, for now. She laughs confidently. She seems exactly like before, probably better than I am. Oh, then that's good. At least, at least the person near me is safe. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Arcuade isn't human. Forgetting such an important thing, I'm really spaced out. Anyway, I'm happy your wound isn't wasn't serious. Oh, what's wrong, Shiki? And just a little earlier, you were calling me a monster. Idiot, I still think you are. But that's something else. I just wanted to thank you for helping me. <laughs> She's so shocked. Is it that shocking? Huh? I helped you, Shiki? Arcuay's eyes widened in surprise. It seems she wasn't even aware of it. Yeah, you helped me, so it's a little late, but thanks for protecting me. If you hadn't pulled me out the way, I would have joined that list of 103 names. Thanks, it wasn't really anything. I'm the reason you met... So you don't have to feel like you owe me. Maybe, but the truth is that you saved me. Since you did, I want to thank you. But if I hadn't made you watch over me, you never would have been involved in all that. I'm the one messing up your everyday life. So wouldn't it be more appropriate for you to hate me rather than be indebted to me? Well, certainly I do think you're a fucking bother. But, you know, in the end, I think I have to take responsibility for my actions. A long, long time ago, someone taught me this. She said, whatever happens around me, I have to stick with, the, I have to stick with things I started to the very end. While it seems quite natural, I am a supporter of that idea. Which is why I don't hate Arakai. I, f I just feel like I'm involved in something pretty bothersome. Oh. Now that you mention it, I did say I needed a shield because you killed me. So I guess I don't have to apologize for involving you in such things. Right. The situation I'm in is my own fault. Your fault, huh? I think you have bad luck, Shiki. If only you killed some other girl than me, things would have never ended up like this. Hey. In the first place, you can't just assume I would kill someone other than you, Arcuay. I've only felt like that, stalked and killed only once, only Arcuay. Or I wanted to think she would be the only one. Ah. Huh? Did you remember something you forgot? Oh, hold on, how does it go? How did... It was, um, it was summer. Wait, wait, I don't remember. 
They kept fucking doing the flashback in the last episode. Like just out of blue, it would be like, it was a hot summer day. I fucking murdered an elementary school kid with my powers or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't know how he did it. No, that's not it. I never really thought about it before, but I just wondered why I wanted to kill you. Arcuate frowns as she looks at me. Well, it's a natural reaction. Well, it's a natural reaction. I, the one who killed Arcuate, is saying that he doesn't know why he killed her. There's no reason at all, right? Because you're just a born killer, Shiki. Fuck. Hold on. What did this woman just say about me? You seem really used to it when you attacked me. You rang the doorbell, put your hand to the door as it opened and entered. While I was still off guard with surprise, you killed me with your first strike and just finished, just finished off by slicing me into pieces. Yeah, your surprise attack was perfect. How perfect was it? A painting of you from that time would have been an unparalleled masterpiece. Oh, how perfect was it? A painting of you from that time would have been an unparalleled masterpiece. That's how perfect it was. The. But no matter how superb a killer, no matter how excellent your technique, the victim this time was a poor choice. I don't know how many people you've killed until now, but I think it was time for you to be caught when you chose me as your prey. The. Uh, Da, da, da. What's with that scary face all of a sudden? If you want to say something, it's better to just say it, bitch. You've never held anything back between us, right? That may be true. I nod and motion her to come near me with my hand. Huh? A secret? I could wait approaches excitedly. I bring my mouth close to her ear and clearly state what I want to say. You know, Arcuade. Yeah, what? Okay, ready. That's not it at all, you fucking dumb bitch! Idiot, 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 dumb bitch, dumb bitch, dumb bitch, dumb bitch, dumb bitch, dumb bitch. My shout echoes through the room. I strike her eardrums with full power, not holding back one bit. <laughs> Owie! <laughs> Arcubay exaggeratedly covers her ears. I'm ticked off now! What are you doing all of a sudden, Shiki? I'm the one who should be angry. I was wondering why you were asking me all those impossible things. Now I understand. Huh? Understand what? About you asking me to be a shield against a fucking monster watching over you because I think of some crazed killer. Jeez, you're unbelievably mistaken. You thought so highly of me because of that? Look, I'll tell you right now. I'm not a killer or a homicidal maniac. You you were the first person I killed. Arcuate's mouth hangs open. Damn it, she really does seem surprised. <laughs> no way. It was your first time that you were that skilled? Yeah. Certainly, I do have the strange eyes, but I still lived an honest life. I never even thought once about using these lines to kill people. But then why did you kill me? You never even saw me before. I don't fucking know. I just became so fixated when I saw you on the street. When I came to, had already like, like cut you up and shit. In this room, without reason, without purpose. I see. Yeah, I see. I don't have any right to be angry at Arcade. Even if she's alive right now and isn't human. The truth is, I killed her with my own hands. Why are you all quiet again? What do you mean, Shiki? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I have to apologize. Why did I conveniently forget such an important thing? Sorry. I'm sorry, Akue. I, Tano Shiki, killed you. More than anything else, I should have apologized for that from the very beginning. There really is something wrong with me. It's only natural she mistook me for a killer. Because I don't even understand that impulse myself. So maybe... Tono Shiki might be a real killer. The reality is I killed you. So I have to accept my sin and punishment. A killer like me can't mix in with the rest of society. Not realizing such an important thing until now is just too cowardly. No matter what Arcuay it is, I'm someone who kills for no reason. I see. Then you really don't understand why yourself, Shiki. 
I nod silently. Then you didn't feel any enjoyment either? Yes, certainly there are those killers for whom killing is like breathing, but you really, you're really normal, Shiki. That's right, at least I try to be. No, you're incredibly normal. Then I was the only one you wanted to kill? Yeah, other than you, I, I never felt that way before. I see, then it's no problem. You're not a killer, Shiki. She says this lightly, almost dismissively. I don't think you have to receive any punishment. By chance, I was the one you wanted to kill, and worse, you were equipped with this unparalleled killing technique. But luckily I am a vampire, so no one died, right? So you don't need to be troubled so much. I don't think you have to worry about those morals of human society. I know. But still, I killed someone. A dangerous person like me can't be allowed loose. That doesn't matter, nigga! Right now, the ones who the, the only ones who can condemn you are me, the victim, are me, the victim, and you, yourself. That may be so, but it doesn't change the fact that I killed you. Right. Even if there's no punishment, the sin will never disappear. Of course. Even now, I still resent it, so it would be troubling if you just forgot. But you know, Shiki, if you feel that way and will always regret it, then I don't think there's going to be a problem. But that's just sugarcoating it. Shiki, there really are people who will not sell their souls to the devil even if they hated the world. Like, someone so honest they could apologize to a vampire. So I think it's alright. No matter what people say or no matter how much or how much you say or not, you can still stay in the world if you want, you want to live in. Well, I'm speechless. How can you... How can you smile and say that to the person who killed you? I know I wouldn't. Arkaway is better than me, bro. Because if I was a vampire and somebody just suddenly killed me for no damn reason, I'm pulling up to their crib and I'm making them commit seppuku. Gonna be a Mortal Kombat Kenshi Harakiri. Arkaway. Come on, we have much more troublesome problem to worry about. Now that you're up, Shaky, I want to talk about from I want to talk about now on. As she speaks, Arkaway collapses on the floor. Damn, Arkaway! I rush over to her. Sweat glistens on her forehead and she's breathing painfully. Oh man, it seems I still can't do much. I look down. Her white top is soaked red near her stomach. Damn. You, that wound, ah, this, the effects of your attack are still lingering on me. I can't even heal my wounds. I closed off the wound at least, but it seems it didn't work too well. Her tone is very cheerful. I notice that as a hint of pain. Close off the wound. With what, Arkue? Um, that. Arkue points at something on the floor. It's, it's brown. At first glance, it looks like a donut or a bomb kuchin, a lab kuchin, but it just turns out to be a roll of packing. Arcuage, you fucking dumbass! Packing tape, nigga! You would have been better off with a fucking paper towel. Well, actually, would she have? I wouldn't want packing tape, like specifically packing tape. I wouldn't want that shit nowhere near a wound. Like, it might close it off, sure. But that shit's nasty. Like, all that sticky stuff is going to get in there. Oh, man. Y you idiot. Who the hell uses packing tape to close off a wound? Hey, you shouldn't call people idiots all the time. I really might start thinking I am one after a while. You are! Shut up and let me see your wound. I reach out for her clothes but she runs away by rolling across the floor. Don't be ridiculous. What are you gonna do if it opens up again? It's fine, just leave it alone. You should stop acting stupid too. Trying to rip off a girl's clothes like this. You're worse than Look, I don't see you as human. So guy or girl, I don't give a fuck. Calm down, okay? If you die from an injury, you got protected me. I feel, I'll be feeling guilty about it forever. Arkaway looks at me in displeasure and this time rolls towards me. Arkaway closes her mouth tightly. 
It seems she's a bit sulky, but I guess it's okay to look at the wound. I lift up her shirt and expose her stomach. Cracking tape is wrapped all around her. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. Like taking off that, if he has to take off that packing tape, that shit is gonna hurt. Even if it healed up, like if it didn't, like if it's not all the way healed, that shit's still gonna hurt like a bitch taking it off. Especially if she left it on for a while. It's really badly done and taking a good look, I can see blood seeping through. I'm disgusted. More than that, I'm pissed off. I lower her shirt back and pick Arukai up. Hey, what are you doing, Shiki? I'm putting you on. A, I'm putting you to bed. I take her to the hospital, but it's not like I can do that. As carefully as possible, I place her on the bed. Look, until I come back, don't you fucking move. If you walk around like before, I'll just forget about. I'll just forget all about you. So be prepared for the consequences. I look around the room. As I thought, there's nothing like a first aid kit around at all. Arkawa, you said you were rich? Huh? Y yeah, money's not a concern for me, but what about it? Hand it over. I'm gonna buy some things I need to treat you. Uh, I don't know if it'll work on you, but I have to treat you to but I have to treat you the same way I would treat an injured person. Fine, but it might be useless. Even if it's useless, I'll do it. I can't leave it alone like that. I see. My body's made the same way as yours, so it might have some meaning. Hurry up and give me the damn money! Just be quiet and stay there! Oh, but don't sleep. You can lie around, but stay up. What? It's shaky. That's a really absurd order. It's absurd, but do it. I've heard your bodily functions weaken when you sleep. I think if you sleep with open wounds, your immune system will get weak and your wound will get even worse. Sleep will only help your tiredness, not heal your wound. So for now, just don't sleep until I get back. Really? Okay, I'll do that. Arkaway smiles happily. As expected, Arkaway's thought process is completely a mystery. I've got no fucking clue what's going on in that tiny ass brain of hers. What the fuck are you smiling for? Shit is not rainbows and sunshine. You're dying. Because you're reliable, Shaky. I say nothing and hold out my hand. Arkaway pulls her wallet out of her skirt and hands it to me. I'll be right back. I turn away from Arkaway and head out the room. I go outside, I notice something in the kitchen. Food. When the table is something less than a meal and more like food. Something like, something less than food and more like ingredients. You might say it's something which appears edible. I guess this is why she was in the kitchen. Idiot. Arkaway says she doesn't eat regular food. So I don't even have to think who this food was for. Damn it, what's with her? I'm getting very irritated. I'm getting so irritated I decide to hurry up and get something to treat her as fast as possible. She's such a sweetheart. Although I say first aid, the only thing that comes to mind are things like restraining bandages or painkillers. But it's still better than nothing. Even if it's a small thing, if it's something, then it's not zero. Believing that, I can buy whatever I can think of. Hey, that tickles. I ignore Akuwe's voice and fasten the gauze as carefully as I can. The wound on the stomach wasn't really large. Akuwe said herself most of it was healed on the outside. But there's still four golf ball sized black holes from the fangs of the crocodile. It might actually be bad for a wound this big, but Considering the possible infection, I apply some disinfectant. I put gauze over the wound after that and carefully wrap it around with bandages. <laughs> quit it! You're too good! Arkawait is laughing cheerfully. I ignore her and pin off her bandages. In order to stop the blood flow, I press a little to tighten the bandages around the wound. Ow, sheesh. I'm taking points off for that one, Shiki. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Imagine you trying to treat a dying motherfucker and they just like, oh, that tickles. Oh, that was too hard. I'm taking points off for that one. Like, shut the fuck up and let me work. Damn. Woo. For now, I've done all I can. <laughs> well then, I at least made it look good, but how is it? Can you move all right, Arkuate? 
You know, it doesn't seem like it'll get in the way. My insides are still pretty messed up, so I can't move fully anyway. I see. Well, the rest is up to you. My specialty is slicing apart, not healing. I step away from Arcuaid and... <laughs> Hold on, I step away from Arcuaid and sit against the wall. You can sleep now. Sleep will bring your strength back and you'll heal soon, right? I'll keep watch, so relax and sleep. No, sleeping won't really help you regain my strength. You said yourself, sleeping only gets rid of tiredness. For me, regaining my strength is only a matter of time. By tomorrow, I'm sure I'll be able to move normally. Just go to sleep already. You look like you're having trouble even talking. Yes, but since you're up shaky, it seems like it'll waste if I sleep now. Arkaway sits up in the bed and talks cheerfully. Jeez, oh well. There's some things I want to ask as well, so I guess it's alright to keep Arkaway company. Arkaway! Can I ask about the hotel from yesterday? That's right. I guess it's going to be our topic considering us. Yeah, I just have one question. The guy last night, the guy you called bleh, 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 just what the hell is he? I'm being serious here, so please don't, don't say something like he's a magician who can make crocodiles appear from his body. I won't say that. I think you know this already, but he's also a vampire. We call him bleh, 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 and he is quite an exception. To tell the truth, he isn't someone you could talk to casually like this. So he was a vampire after all. But for some reason, like Arkaway sitting in front of me, he doesn't match my image of a vampire either. So this, what kind of guy is he? How the fuck are you saying that? You seem to know him or something. Of course not. I don't have any vampire acquaintances. Knowing them means I'm going to kill them the next instant. This is the first time I ever met a vampire without killing it. But you guys were talking about a lot of things. It would be hasty to call him an acquaintance. It would be hasty to call him an acquaintance because of that. It's a famous vampire, so no introductions were necessary when we met, that's all. Isn't it natural to know the name of vampires with unusual powers in a long history? Among those, it stands out even more. Despite being one of the oldest vampires, he has neither a castle nor territory and is an eccentric wanderer. The church has given him a second name, Chaos. Chaos? What's that? Literally squirming, squelching chaos. Like a primordial earth where no one knows what will fly out after the mixing of various things. A meaning I'm guessing from last night. Not knowing what will fly out. Jeez, you saw his body too, right Shiki? We spoke of it earlier, but aged vampires cannot easily regenerate damage to their bodies. To restore the body after centuries of existence, the weak life of a human isn't enough. So using that simply more superior life forms, wild animals and magic beasts as raw material, they compose their bodies. As one of the oldest vampires, the, the, it probably is in a league of his own regarding the sheer amount of beasts he has caught and used for his body. A league of his own? Things like those black dogs are part of his body then? Exactly. But there's a limit to a human's capacity. Probably only about 30 beasts can be controlled at once. Having more than one illusionary beast, such as a magical or a phantom beast would overload one's capacity. Putting that into consideration, all of his familiars are probably real animals. Yeah, that may be fortunate. Yeah, that may be fortunate. I don't quite get that last part, but that means there's 30 of those black ass dogs. No, that can't be right. Black dogs weren't the only things rampaging in the hotel. I think there were things like lions and leopards too. Right. To be able to bring together 30 animals of the same type is one thing, but for him to have different beasts in his body truly places the strength of his willpower apart from others. Well, it does seem odd that if he has that sort of power, he would only use wild animals. I would have thought he would employ more magical beasts with his sort of willpower. Hmm. Arakai descends deep in his thought. Whatever. Anyway, we at least know his weapons are 20 or 30 familiars. So we can understand why he's called Chaos. His name really isn't Chaos? Yeah, for most long-lived dead apostles don't use their names from their human lives. But they don't make up a new name themselves, the church assigns them one. 
they add names they add on names as they find new special characteristics of the vampire so some of them have names as long as spells and i guess the church must have really hated him to name him chaos it would have been enough for one lion to hunt the entire it would have been enough for one lion to hunt the entire hotel right but he let loose all of his beasts to feed meaning he enjoyed meaning he seems to enjoy the such excesses 30 beasts inside the vampire just with that he killed and ate without a trace of a hundred people in the hotel in 30 minutes i can't believe this shit. he's a complete monster yes he really is the worst opponent i could have at the moment he's one of those you never want to meet but what's worse is that such a guy knows where we are where we are even now i'm sure his familiars are watching us what isn't it obvious we were saved earlier because the sun rose, but we can't count on that tonight. He knows of this place, we will certainly come to kill us at the height of his power at midnight. Come to kill us tonight? Yes, he said so himself. What is this? That man in the black coat is coming tonight? I don't know what I should say. I should escape. I know that's the wisest decision, but our Kuwait is in this condition. Even if she ran away, I don't think she'd be able to escape from that monster. No, less about her and more about me. If I stay here, if I stay involved with Arcoe, there's no mistake in the fact I'll face him. He is dangerous, and his beat is hard as fuck. Clearly put, he is insane. More than his body which houses those animals, his eyes are like a machine's, devoid of even a single emotion. The true eyes of a killer which does whatever it is assigned to do. As one who has experienced his attack, I'm sure that without a doubt he is to be avoided. But does that mean I should just leave Ar Arcuate here and run away? No matter who she is, I can't move because she protected me. And I can't tell her good luck and go home. Arcuate, I... But it's alright. Even he is not a problem for you. No matter who it is, you can kill anyone with a single blow. Huh? Arkuwait says something outrageous, as if it was completely ordinary. Hey, what in the world are you saying? What am I saying? You're gonna fight with me, right? Arkuwait looks directly at me. Her eyes place all trust in me. But this isn't a joke. I... I don't need a... Nigga? No way I could take on a monster like I like to refuse, but Tokuwaru. I know I have to refuse, but no matter how much I think about it, I can't do anything. Arkue. Sorry, but I Am I going to abandon her? It's my fault. Because of Tono Shaky, she can't move as she needs to. I Am I running away? From that monster who mercilessly cruelly one-sidedly slaughtered all those people run away and pretend like i never saw it after being the only one to survive i'm just gonna run away without any pains of guilt the lines of death only i can see didn't that important person once tell me that i have this power because there would be a time i would need it shaky yeah i know i can't run away by myself i look up at the ceiling and take a deep breath deep breath Fortunately, that prepares me just for a bit for what's to come. All right, I'll help you, Arcade. I think it's my duty to do so as the only one who survived in that hotel. Then it's decided. It's all right, Shiki. With your skills, you have no problem killing him. Arcade states this outrageous thing right with, with a straight face. Well, I'm not as optimistic as she is, but I've got no choice. The question is how I'll act to do that. I froze as soon as I looked at his, looked into his eyes at the hotel. So I think all I can do is approach him from behind so he won't notice me and then get him somehow. Oh, that. That was just because your will is weak, Shiki. His mystic eyes are nothing special, so if you just discard your doubts, you should be able to deflect his gaze even if you look right into his eyes. Arcuway casually mentions it, but I'm still nervous. Get this ticking fucking clock on my ear. No, I better not plan on doing something I've never done. I'm going to approach him from behind and cut the lines on his limbs. That ought to take away his freedom of movement and... If you do that, Shiki, you'll die. 
Huh? You say the question is how you'll act. That's not right. The real question is how you'll kill. That's true, but Shiki, you're about to fight a monster called a vampire. So throw away your human morals, even if it's just for the night. They'll only weigh you down in the crucial moments. I understand that much. He's a monster, so that's why I wanted to help you stop him. No, you don't understand. Cut off his limbs? Don't do something so suicidal. If you got the time to cut off his limbs, first cut off his life. Nobody else can but you. Listen to me. Don't give him the chance to retaliate. The difference in your offensive abilities is just too great. If you miss your first strike, you've got no chance of winning whatsoever. Arkaway's eyes are unforgiving of any denial. It's true. It's exactly as she says. If I take my time cutting his limbs off first, I might find my head being eaten by the mouth of a crocodile as I do so. Shiki. He will come at midnight tonight. That's when we'll know when you and I will kill him until he can be killed no further. Not how you act, but how you kill. Think only about that. Arkowitz's savage eyes are staring straight at me. She is really angry. Angry that I still hold such naive notions. I understand. I won't hesitate. I'll take out his point of death in a single strike. That's what I should do, right, Ar Arkowitz? Arkowitz doesn't answer. I suppose her silence indicates agreement. But where should we wait? Bystanders are going to get killed, like back at the hotel if we wait here in these apartments. Should we change our location? Yes. Yes, I think the park would be suitable. No one's there late at night, and if anyone happens to pass by, it's their own bad luck. Saying that, Arkaway turns her back to me. Her ass is fat as fuck. What's wrong? If you got something to say, then say it. I've decided to help you, so I'm willing to take risks. It's useless. You haven't used the word kill even once. At this rate, you'll just hesitate at the last moment and be killed. That's not true. He's a monster who's eaten over 100 people. There's no way I'd hesitate to kill him. Arkaway gives a small sigh. If I controlled you, I could make sure you killed him. I felt that I wanted to do so for the first time, but I also felt like I didn't want to do that for the first time. It's kind of a big contradiction. Arkaway turns to face me, mumbling something I didn't really understand. I trust you, Shiki. Let's get, let's get them together. A smile comes over Arkaway's face, but her smile looks really uneasy. The plan itself is unbelievably simple. Just a little before midnight, Arkaway leaves the room and heads toward the park first. His familiar, the Blue Crow, according to Arkaway, should follow her. So if I leave the room and go to the park just a bit after she does, then I'll hide in a bush where I can see Arkaway and wait for bleh, to arrive. While Arkaway keeps his attention, I approach him from behind and cut his line of death. Arkaway stands absentmindedly in the middle of the park. I hide in a bush about 20 meters away. The park is empty. It's 10 minutes before midnight. Arkaway has her head tilted up, watching the blue moon above her. I gripped the knife tightly. Arkaway said that that will definitely come. So all I have to do is get behind him, approach him without making too much noise, and then cut his line in one breath. Ugh. I try taking a deep breath, deep breath. My body is moving just fine, except my fingers gripping the knife. They are tied and immobile as if not part of my body. Maybe I'm nervous. That vampire called that will come again. Then I'll have to confront that monster again. Or that I'll have to kill him soon. <sighs> my breathing speeds up. My heart pounds as if it's not part of my body. Calm down, he isn't even here yet. That's right, the target has yet to arrive. I'm beginning to worry I won't be able to move my feet by the time he arrives at this rate. Arkawade, aren't you scared? I stare at the white girl, vacantly looking up at the moon. She doesn't look uneasy at all. Her face looking up at the moon comes down. 
At the same time, it seems I've kept you waiting, princess of the true ancestors. A heavy voice like rusted iron. That's why Arcuay looked down. More than five meters from her, and more than ten meters from me, a man in a black coat appears like a ghost. Yes, I've been waiting for quite some time, Chaos. Or would you prefer I call you Fabro Rohan? Rohan? Sounds classier. Arcaway's voice reaches me through the wind. Impressive. I would never have dreamed anyone would call me by the name I went by while I was still a human. Just what one would expect from our executioner. I suppose you have long since found out all there is to know about the current 27 ancestors of the dead apostles. I can hear the reply clearly as well. Ah, my breathing grows louder. Arcaway is drawing his attention. This is my only chance. I take my glasses off through sheer willpower. I hold the knife in my right hand, pressing it against my chest. A white weapon. Now with this, I'm going to dismantle that man-eating monster. Save. I think they're doing something clever here. I'm gonna find out. I personally, I think they're doing something clever right here, okay? If this is wrong, if this doesn't go the way I want it to, I'm going to, I'm going to take this shit back. But I think they're doing something clever here, okay? Because she mentioned earlier that he hasn't said the word kill. And he had he doesn't have the willpower to kill him. So because and, and they put the they put the quotation marks to put emphasis on this, right? He said dismantle. So I feel like if we dash towards him, he's gonna hesitate. So we have to wait and let him build up the willpower. And then next time he's going to say kill. And then when he says kill, that's when we dash towards him. I'm betting on that. It's still too early. No, it's too early. He just arrived. A little more until his attention is focused more on Arcaway. I can't launch a surprise attack. Don't get it wrong. The ancestors of the dead apostles are not a group of 27, but of 28. You do not recognize the serpent as one of your own? Of course. His ideals differ from ours. He is a vampire, but he does not hold the told to the meaning of being a vampire. Consequently, we do not accept him as one of us. But we are old friends. I believe I understand him more than the other dead apostles. I see. Come to think of it, you are like the serpent as well. As you are unlike the other vampires too. Since you are both heretics, you must share common interests. Wrong. Heresy is isolated, therefore it is heresy. Just because we both are separated from the flock, doesn't mean we comprehend one another. Really? Coming as far as this country to pursue me, I think you guys are really similar. Do not be ridiculous. You are the capricious one. Your purpose is to execute dead apostles. So why do you persistently pursue the serpent of Akasha? The serpent's poison is not something the true princess of true ancestors should be persistent about. His voice gets slightly louder. Arkowitz's taunting must be working. He's looking at his only enemy. What should I do now? All right, get him. He didn't say anything about killing him, but take it. He's looking only at Arkue. My chance is only during this instant. Gripping my knife, I crouch down. With everything I have, I run towards him. All his senses are directed at Arkue. Even I, who was not in this conversation, can tell he's only looking forward. His back looks defenseless, not knowing I will dismantle it in a few seconds. Nigga, this is not- You're not fucking Sukuna! You're not supposed to dismantle! You need to hit a world cutting slash and kill this nigga. I can do it. I can feel it. Without a doubt, I can kill him. I run. Only a matter of steps before I reach his back with my knife. His back. His defenseless back. There's no mistake. He does not sense me. One more step. Then it's all over. Huh? I stop. What? What is his body? Nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere, 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 nowhere. 
There's not a single line anywhere. Impossible. No such life is possible. Headache. My fingers gripping the knife tremble. After a stab of pain in my brain, I see a single black point on his back. There. That should be where his fatal flaw is. There's something wrong with it being a point rather than a line, but anyway, I'll stab him there. I take a lunging step. The knife in my right hand races towards his point. Huh? Right before my hit connects, the points along his back multiply rapidly. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, twenty. It's blood! This isn't right. This doesn't feel like it's death. There are more heterogeneous aggregation. His, his body, what the hell is it? Shiki! Arkuwe's voice. No, I don't have time to think now. His back is right there. Right now, I can just pick any one of his points and it'll be over. There! I'm bringing the knife down as I yell. However, before then, his back rises up like a balloon. Pop. A black dog appears from his back as if emerging from a black sea. What? The black dog shoots forth like a missile. I slice his line with my knife, but it's just a line. Only the dog's legs are cut off. Its trajectory does not stop. Wood. The black dog rams his head into my stomach. What strength? I fly back several meters and get pushed down on the ground. The black dog then tries to bite into my neck. I pierce the dog's right abdomen with my knife. My knife enters the black dog's point of death as easily as going through air. The black dog's movements stop. In that instant, it becomes a black fluid and pours over me. Covered in the black fluid, I can't stand up. Why you? I can't get it off. As if sewn to the ground, I can't move. Hmm. It seems something has happened behind me. I hear his voice. Stretched out against the ground, I look towards him and I arc arcway. You're familiar? But how unfortunate. Those who enter my domain will be recognized and attacked by one of us, even if I do not notice. There can be no surprise attacks against me. It seems so. You weren't even looking at anything but me, yet you still reacted to the danger behind you. That's the strength of a collective, is it not, Chaos? Arcuate narrows her eyes slightly and walks towards him. Interesting. You are so weak you can't even use your marble phantasm, yet you still challenge me. There's no need. There's no point in becoming... There's no point in becoming one with the world just to fight a dead apostle. For someone like you, these claws will be enough, Chaos. I hear a short laugh. Fool! Realize your folly, Arcuate Brunstud! He raises an arm. His coat ruffles like a cape and countless animals fly forth. Ugh, the fuck is that? Nasty ass. With a thunderous roar, three beasts run towards Arcuate like bullets. Not anything like black dogs, but three giant leopards larger than him himself. Like, th like large demonic silhouettes. Arcuate can't move. Three leopards run, cracking the bricks under them just by running. They're far faster than Arcuate who's trying to run away. The three beasts pounce towards Arcuate. It's over quickly. That's hard. In an instant, the three lepers' bodies are cut in half and fall to the ground. What? His voice booms. Arcuate is silent. From there, she moves to attack him. Beasts emerge from his body. The instant it emerges, the lion's head is grabbed and torn apart from its body. The leopard is killed the instant it attacks Arcuate by getting pierced by her, by her punch through its head. The tiger is torn apart like clay. Everything following them suffers the same fate. The same with the flying eagle and a giant grizzly bear. The same with the shark swimming in the ground. The same with the ridiculously large elephant. In the end, they can't even stop her and turn back into a black sticky fluid. He tries to escape. Arcuate swings her claws. After the sound of ripping flesh, his body is split in two from the neck down. Gah! Roaring in pain, he leaps away from Arcuate. Split from the neck to the waist, he's lost over half his body. Splat. 
The rest of his body falls at Arkuwait's feet. This isn't a fight. What about Arkuwait saying she was only able to move? The beasts he let out weren't weak. These lions and tigers, just one of them could tear a car into scraps. And that grizzly bear could have torn a tank apart with its uncontrolled violence. But such beasts were torn apart by Arkuwait, and he himself is half dead. <laughs> it almost seems like a joke. If it was this easy, maybe it would have been better if I wasn't here from the start. Ah! Ah! He keeps trying, he keeps retreating as if to escape. She might be tired. Arkuwait walks towards his, him slowly, panting. I can hear heavy breathing. It belongs to Arkuwait. Ragged, painful breathing. Why is that? Arkuwait's breathing sounds more painful than his, who is torn in half. It is quite unbelievable. Weakened as you are, you still have that much power. As expected from the executioner prepared by the true ancestors. Do not face the white vampire princess. It seems the warnings of the others were correct. His voice is condemned at all. I feel a horrible sinking sense of despair. Arkaway tries to catch her breath as she slowly draws near him. But I never expected to defeat you with only 10 or 20 of myself in the first place. Enough boasting! You can't kill me with any amount of such familiars, as I have cut half of your body. No matter what, you have no chance of winning. My familiars have all been killed, but you seem to be mistaken. I do not carry familiars, nor do I use them. All those things you fought were truly me. It is quite unpleasant to be considered similar to other mongrels who capture other living beings to repair their damaged flesh. You should have been able to tell with a glance if you had not been weakened. Use your golden mystic eyes and see. Can you see it? The chaos of the beasts inside my body. Splash. Something moves quickly at the edge of my vision. Ah. Uh, behind Arcade. The half of his body which was cut off is shaking. It rises up in a large clot and shoots towards Arcue. Arcue, behind you! Shiki! Arcue turns around, but she doesn't make it. Half of his body lying on the ground becomes countless large serpents which attacks Arcue from behind. Crap. The large serpents wrap around Arcue to return to a black fluid. Arcue is pinned to the ground like me, but the pressure is hundreds of times worse. Oh, no way! She's pushed down. Arkaway tries to escape. It is useless. You should understand what it, that is. We should understand what that is, Princess of the True Ancestors. Arkaway's face lights up in pain and surprise. The remaining half of him raises his voice as if howling. Let him have that. Understand. Count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. Are you pleased with the chaos within my body, Arkuwaite Brunstad? Are you sane? A human body having more than 300 factors compressed in, something as small and close as a human shape, this is just like... Indeed. No different from the primordial sea. I am not making up my body up with other animals. I merely use the factors called animals as my body, mixing them like mud. I have no such thing as familiars. What exists are beasts, and lives equal to that number. Ripping my body in half or crushing my head is meaningless. I am one, and the beasts. If you wish to destroy me, you need to destroy all lives at once. This can't be. This is what chaos means. Of course. So my altar serves no concrete existence. When released from this body, which is my territory, they will take form as some kind of species for the first time. They have no form of their own from the beginning. You can kill them outside of me, but once they return, they regenerate as part of my chaos. Though, even I cannot predict what they will become once they emerge. Understanding and controlling this disorder den dendrogram is my eternal thesis. The vampire with only half a body gives a boasting, muffled laugh. That's impossible! To take in souls if you encapsulate uncolored, conceptualized existences, you yourself will disappear. Indeed. That is why this is not a single person here. The personality already does not exist. We are not a single body, 
but closer to a limitless collective. Certainly, there is no meaning of existence in such life. There are already life forms in the deep ocean which can be, the, which can be termed eternal systems. This body will lose its intelligence and become a mere specimen, just like them someday. But do you not find it magnificent? There are things which swirl around inside me, and you do not know what form they will take. This small world is like that of a world in its pre-primal stages. A chaotic space where what will be born is unpredictable. The darkness of chaos, just like this planet's dendrogram, while still having the possibility of dramatic change. I wish to know what lies at, at I wish to know what lies as its I wish to know what lies at its culmination before I disappear. This is why the church gave me this name, Chaos, equipped with the beasts, no longer a vampire, but a space which become chaos, a heretic who broke the taboo. Arkaway's voice is held off. The black fluid squirms all around her. Even Arkaway's face is already half covered. That's all. Under such a prison, even you cannot escape. It is a union of 500 of my parts, the soil of Genesis. Even were you to be at full strength, you cannot hope to destroy it. It is equivalent to destroying a whole continent. Remains half, uh, remaining half approaches Arkaway slowly. Many of our brethren have been killed by you. Many have sought to destroy you, only to be destroyed in turn. But that is all over. I, Chaos, will accomplish a great achievement none could perform until now. This reality, Marvel, who? It should be easy to tell. Your nemesis, the serpent, came to me to teach me, but not the current one of this generation. Before you killed him, he bequeathed upon me the method of making this cage. I can't hear Akuwe's voice anymore. Looking, her mouth is covered in the black fluid. But the serpent is also a tragedy. What was once a priest of the church can't live on because of a goddess of death like yourself is chasing him. If he had lived, he might, be, he might have devised a means to control the chaos in my body. It must certainly have been regretful not being able to fully utilize such a clear heresy before getting destroyed. I was a sworn friend of the serpent. While you persistently pursue him without tiring, I am very curious. But it seems you can no longer speak. The black fluid starts to pin down Arkaway's body. By now it's no longer Arkaway's collapsed feminine form, but only a formless mud. I will make you part of me, Arkaway Brunstud. Absorbing your amount will, will, of will may require great effort, but it will make me the highest rank of vampire. A little pain is like a celebration for a new creation. When that happens, even the professional killers of the abominable burial agency will have nothing will be nothing to fear. I will eradicate all members of that moldy church. Arkaway's face sinks completely without a sucking sound. With a sucking sound, even the lines of, of her body which I could barely see before have disappeared. At this rate, if I leave Arkaway alone, she'll be absorbed into the black fluid. Why you? I look at the black fluid covering me. The black lines of death definitely do exist. Gah! Resisting the throbbing pain in my head, I run my knife along them. The black fluid becomes like mere water as I slice the lines. All right. I breathe heavily as I stand up. I have to save her. I have to save Arkaway from that monster. But how? I can't even get close to him. Even Arkaway, as terrific as she was, she wasn't able to take him. Then if I stand and face him, wouldn't I be killed instantly? I only barely managed to kill one dog. I wouldn't last a second against those other beasts like the lions or leopards. Furthermore, I can see hundreds of points on his back. I couldn't fully, co fully comprehend the convert conversation between him and Arkaway, but it seems like seems that like each one of those beasts are him. Then if I want to defeat the vampire, I'll need to kill all of the beasts having that point. I can't step forward. No matter what, a human can't step forward toward a monster like that. Damn it! In the end, once more I'm trying to save my life and do nothing about someone getting killed. Oh? I hear, I hear a voice. His voice is full of contained amusement. No, it's not his voice. I can hear something like the sound of footsteps. 
This can't be. The sound is far away, but without a doubt, the sound of light. Skipping footsteps is drawing closer. Arkowitz said earlier, the park is empty of people at night, and if people pass by, then they are simply out of luck. Far away, I see a small human shape. Some girl I do not know about my own age. This isn't good. For her to come here, it means, run away! I scream. I scream forgetting that he wasn't even paying attention to me or that he might attack me. Yet the passerby does not stop. Not knowing anything, she casually heads for this place. Half of the vampire in the black coat breathes out of content. My body has just been torn apart. I need more sustenance. His half of a coat squirms like a living thing. Fortunately, it seems sustenance has arrived. A black beast flies from his body. Stop! My voice doesn't reach her. The beast runs like a black wind towards the faraway figure. It's over in an instant. A short scream. The sound of a body hitting the ground. The smell of blood wafting on the air. The black tiger retrieves a human in its mouth. The girl's face is, is no more. Most likely gouged out by the tiger's claws too ruthless, or a pulse of one-sided violence. Gah! My head hurts. My throat is starting to dry. My mind starts to compress and I can only see the enemy in front of me. The tiger slithers like a snake into his body. It's strange. The corpse of the girl in the tiger's mouth disappears, yet munch, crunch, grind. She's not there, yet I can still hear the sound. Rip. Gorge. Gulp. The sounds are coming from inside the man. The sounds of dissolving flesh, shattering bone, the slow chewing of a human. Yeah. No mistake. Inside his body, he's eating that person. His lips twist into a smile. With that, a switch goes off in my brain. You fucking bastard! I can't think. I just run towards him. My vision soaks in red. Feed. A black leopard flies from his body. How many times greater are, are its speed and ferocity compared to those black dogs? I don't give a fuck. It's still a living thing. If it lives, it ain't shit. You're in my way. I stop and say so to the corpse by my feet. The black leopard is lying in four pieces. I see. You were the one who attacked me from behind earlier. It seems he finally realized I'm here. Emotionless eyes look toward me. Yeah, just like Arkwide said. As long as I don't allow, as, I don't, as long as I don't allow myself to get lost, being stared by him doesn't change anything. Let Arkwide go, monster. I said, let her go. I'm your opponent. You're nothing with that half body of yours, bitch, pussy, fucker. Without a word, without a word, the vampire with the black coat looks at both looks both looks both Arukai, Arukai and I over. You say you can be my opponent, bitch. Yes, that's what I said. So I'm saying, release her, then hurry up and return your body to normal, so I can fuck you up. His neck moves up and down. It seems like he's laughing. You have taken away the fun. Receive your punishment, human. He doesn't change. He seems like he'll leave Arukai with half of his body and remain as he is. I promise you. I promise you. I will slowly chew you apart alive. Flutter. His remaining arm is lifted. Such an inferior mental circuit. The price of your arrogance. Such an inferior mental circuit. The price of your arrogance thinking you can face me will be your certain death. Whoosh. A warm wind blows, no Tyler the Creator. Scores of beasts emerge from his half body. The number of beasts emerging is in 10 or 20. Even if each isn't a, even if each is not a strong beast, it's close to a hundred of them. Against a single human like me, they swarm like ants gathering around a sugar cube. Ugh. I stick my knife into the black dog before me. The dog dies as its death is cut. 
Instantly, the sound of bird, birds' wings overhead. With the grating sound, the meat of my forehead is taken to the bone. I don't have time to react to the pain. At the same time, several black dogs bite my arms and torso from both sides. You junk! Slice, slice. I stab the death of the two dogs in my line of vision. But it isn't enough. For each one I kill, ten more beasts takes its place and ripped into my body. Ah! I can't see, I can't see it. Oh shit. I almost fucked up. Hold on. I accidentally clicked something wrong. I can't see. I can't see anything. Everything is pitch black. There isn't anything wrong with my eyes. All around me, the black beasts envelop me with darkness. Things can't keep going this way. I will die. I won't last more than five seconds. My ankles are bitten. Blood flows. My body feels like it will fall. If I collapse, it will be all over. They will ravenously feast on my body if I hit the ground. No, no. That is more fearful than painful. Everything is pitch black. I can't see anything. I can't do anything. But that's why I have to think. So this is actually the right way. Holy fuck. I'll bear with it for now and wait for my chance. How? You can't see shit. If number one is the right option, I think it's number two. I feel like, I feel like we got to force our way out or some shit. We got to force our way over to him because think about it, right? He's released. Hold on. Think about it, right? He's released all of the beasts within him. So we should be able to do it because he said that um, what it was, what he's used against Arcuate was 500 beasts to um, what's, what it was, blah, blah, blah. So he sick the rest of them over at us. So let's go destroy the main body. If this doesn't work, we're fucked. The main source. If I can do something about his main body manipulating the beast, I might be able to save at least Arcuade. Ah! I blindly swing my knife. I force my faltering body and run forward. If he hasn't moved as he toys with me, then he should be standing with his half body ahead of here. Nisville! Stop your noise making. It is unpleasant. His coat wavers. From there, a white horn comes straight at me. Huh? Something like all to antlers sticks into my torso. I should have fucking expected this. Okay. It's so sharp it doesn't really hurt. I fall flat on my back. Okay, fuck you. I'm quite the fastidious person. Rest assured, there will not be even one of your cells left. I hear a voice. At the same time, a black dome arches over me. A ceiling overhead like a black umbrella. And all around, the glowing eyes of the beasts. Rip. My skin is being ripped. Die. Rip. My flesh is being eaten. Die. Grit. My bones are being scraped. Die. My mind can no longer think anything. Only to frantically use my arms to protect my face. My right hand tightens, giving a firm grip on my knife. Die. I'm being eaten. Strange. I'm being attacked by this many beasts. They should be able to eat me completely in just one minute. Yet they take their time. Die. I'm bleeding too much. My blood and their saliva coat my body. It feels terrible. Die. I can't see anything outside. Just complete blackness. Die. Those countless pairs of eyes say it. They say it as they truly eat me only bit by bit. They can't talk so they speak with their blazing eyes. Die. Hurry up and die. The black dome of beasts chants in unison. The scream leaks out, but no one's gonna help me. I'll be killed. Like that person before, I'll be devoured alive. Ah, ah, no. I don't fucking want that. I don't wanna die this way. I don't wanna be eaten while being conscious. I don't wanna be killed like this. Scary. That's scary, very scary. Scary, scary, frightening, frightening, scary, frightening, scary, scary, scary. I'll be killed. Yes, I'll be killed. There's nowhere to run. I'll be killed like this. I'll be torn apart to become a meal for all of them. There's nothing I can do. With my eyes painted vermilion, I stare at myself emptily. <laughs> I start to laugh. 
Because I don't even know why I'm being killed. But still, Tano Shiki will be killed like this. You are stubborn. If you break down, it will be easier for you. <laughs> ha 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 ha. He laughs in the distance, slowly eating me and laughing. It's like my whole body is dissolving. Horrible. Too horrible. This is too horrible. My wounds hurt. They hurt. Hurt a lot. Death is frightening. It's frightening. Very frightening. He's laughing in the distance, watching me die and laughing. If I strain my ears, I can still hear chewing and smashing of bones coming from within. Not only did he devour all those people yesterday, not only did he eat that unknown person, he's trying to eat and kill even me. Gah! Something like claws digs into my chest. It's where the scar from my old wound is. Very painful, frightening, only hateful place. Eight years ago, that summer day. Yeah, it really was hateful. There wasn't any room for pain or fear. Yes, I just hated. Then what is to be done is already decided. If you're gonna kill me then, my whole body is already numb. All that remains is the sensation of the knife I refuse to drop in my right hand. Be killed. Be killed? Who? By what? <laughs> Y'all niggas don't know who the fuck I am. I laugh out. Right, that's exactly how it is. Running away is absolutely impossible. Escape is absolutely impossible. There's only one thing to be done. Be killed. Be killed. Definitely, without a doubt, be killed. By nothing else and by no one else. He will be killed by me. <laughs> In place of a yell, I start to laugh like an idiot. Strange. Strange that I can't stop laughing. This nigga don't know who the fuck I am. Slice. 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 With each sound, another beast dies. My brain is in agony. All throughout my body, my nerves, my blood vessels, my cells, my blood, everything has gone abnormal. The black dome disappears. I just killed about 70 beasts which were eating at my body. What? I can hear his dumbass voice. <laughs> All right, I have to stand or I won't be able to kill anymore. I stand up. There's no problem. <laughs> There's not a single place where I'm not wounded, but I can still move around for a while. What did you? Yeah, I understand how you feel, vampire. My, my brain's on fire. It's similar, like just like when I killed Arcoid. I can't even breathe properly. Along with the headache and heat, which just drives me insane. It's, it's almost enough to make me puke. The world is saturated with death. So you want to kill me, monster? Then we have something in common. Fine, let's fight to the death, Chaos. With that, my stiff right hand moves freely. Switching to a reverse grip of my knife, I run towards him. A bigger beast appears from his body, but it's low-key bitch made. Finally, he's letting out the big stuff he used for our arcade. But they don't last long. No matter how large, fast, or brutal they are, they basically can't kill me unless they touch me. If they try to touch me, I slice whatever part tries. In the end, it made no difference whether it was a black dog, a lion, or a tiger. Two of the large ones collapse and change into black water. To get to them, there's still some distance left to close. How can this be? Those of us even the princess could not eliminate are returning to nothingness. He's saying something. I don't give a fuck, though. What did you do? I, uh, I don't understand. What did you do? I fixed my gaze on his body. Countless points. If I want to live, if I want to kill him, I have to kill each and every one of them. <laughs> it's probably not possible. Still, I can't finish like this. Arcoway, who was swallowed by the black liquid, all of those hundreds of people that were killed... And this body being almost killed? I grit my teeth. There's no time to speak words of hatred. Unfortunately, moving takes all my power. I don't have any extra energy to answer him. No, if I do have that sort of energy as quickly as possible. Very well, I now recognize you as an obstacle to me. Killing this beast smelling bitch would be far better. His black coat wides open. A vile stench of beasts. 
The sense of danger before was nothing compared to what it is now. From inside his coat, things come out which I, haven't, which I have seen at least once when I was a child. Like this horse with a horn on his forehead or this huge winged lizard. Those are troublesome. It's not simple to kill them because they have so few parts vulnerable to death, so I get more serious. Is it because I said kill? The pulsing of my body is painful. My nerves are grinding together. Everything in my body links together to remove that which gets in my way. I slice in half the horned horse along with its horn. I slice the lizard from, the, from its back to its lower right abdomen. Impossible! I hear that obstacle's voice. Unfortunately, I can't even see properly now. All I can see are those black points and lines. Scum! Why must I attack a mere human with my full force? With a squishy, fleshy sound, his half-body returns to its previous human shape. It seems he finally put back the half of his body binding Arcoid. I will kill you. You will find out that that existence far superior to yours exists within me. His arm tears into his own chest. As if ripping apart darkness, he rips into his own chest. From the hole in him, something bizarre emerges. If I have to describe it simply, it's a crab-like spider. A bit bigger than the giant elephant which Arcoid killed. Huh. My vision has gone red. I can't see very well. All I can see are their bizarre silhouettes and their death. My fingers are cold. Maybe I've lost too much blood. My whole body is frigid. But still, my body isn't screaming. It orders me forward, saying that I have enough strength to scream. Saying that if I have enough strength to scream, use that energy to kill him faster. My spine hurts. My body is cold. My fingers are frozen. Yet my brain burns with fire. These crab spider beasts keep crawling out from him. He's only a little bit away. These things are in the way of me getting to him. For now, these three, I completely kill those emerged obstacles. Impossible. As if dizzy, he moves back. There's no way someone can destroy all my killing beasts. Such a fact is impossible. We are immortal. As long as I live, the immortal beasts return to chaos and are reborn. So, so then, why do they return to the original nothingness after being stabbed by you? I walk towards my screaming enemy. Screaming like a little bitch. He tries to pull back and retreat but stops himself. Unsightly. His previous machine-like eyes finally start to burn with crimson hatred. I understand how he feels. Probably. The killer in him is ordering himself to retreat. But the vampire in him does not allow the feet from a mere human. He doesn't understand. He doesn't even let himself withdraw. So he does not allow himself to even take a single step back. His mind stubbornly doesn't allow him to realize his powerlessness. Another step forward. From here, I can jump and slice his body with my knife. No, never! His name is whatever the fuck. The immortal called chaos of the undecaying vampire race. Oh, my name is Nethither! The immortal called chaos of the undecaying vampire race. It is not possible for me to look this unsightly! His body starts to form a shape. The body which was only darkness begins to transform. This body is immortal. I have surpassed death long ago. His body leaps forward. Not as beasts. Condensing all his remaining beasts to the limit, he transforms himself into the best beast and moves in to kill me. His speed is as fast as Arcoades. He reaches out with his hands, which would pulverize my neck if he contacted me. Dodging that bullshit, I cut the line on his arm. As if unable to control his speed, he rushes past me without stopping. The distance between us grows again. I feel dizzy. I can't stop shaking. What is this? He stares at his severed arm in astonishment. What is this? Why does this severed part not regenerate? How could such a ridiculous thing be occurring? He isn't a magus or a, a, a burrier. So how can you destroy me just by cutting me? How stupid. If you get too concerned over appearances like that, you'll get killed, Chaos. Oh, how stupid. If you get concerned over appearances like that, you'll get killed, Chaos. I hear a familiar voice near him. 
You! With bloodshot eyes, he stares at Arkaway, standing elegantly to the side. Oh, I see. When he ceased being only half a body, she became free. Oh, don't worry about me. Shiki will take care of you. Right now, he would even kill me if I got in the way. A giggling voice. It's your fault for thinking you should kill him painfully. You should kill your enemy quickly without allowing the opportunity for a counter-strike, right? That was your mistake, dumbass. Silence! I do not make mistakes! I still have 560 lives remaining! Just wait. Once I kill him, I will get you once more. Really? It won't happen, but I'll be waiting. Arkaway doesn't go near him. He's only looking at me. He's coming. I brace my right hand with my, with my left as I grip my knife. He crouches. It's the action of a predator preparing to pounce on his prey. Oh, I forgot to tell you one more thing. Her voice flows like the wind before that. It may be a little late, but he's killed me once before. What? This time it's for real. In his astonishment, he loses sight of his identity. For a moment, his entranced thoughts flow into my mind like a curse. Is this a nightmare? Kill Arcuade Br Brunstud? This monster, for whom even the words immortality isn't enough to describe, was killed by that human? No, that cannot be true. But wait, hypothetically, if it is true, then just which one of us was the pretentious one? Exactly. It seems the pretentious one is you. Ha! <laughs> ah At the end of Hatred and Chaos, he laughed with pleasure from the bottom of his heart. I can't wait any longer. I start running towards my unmoving target. I see! You are going to kill me, human! The beast roars. With one arm, he dashes forth to pierce my heart. His speed is fast. You can't ask for any more. A simple, efficient motion to kill me. A motion too beautiful. This nigga ugly though. I slice his outstretched arm. Hundreds of points of death are on his body. But more than that, deep inside of him, in his very center, I can see his ultimate point. It doesn't matter how many lives he has. I'm only going to kill the existence of chaos. So, if, so it isn't killing him, but the chaos which is him. I'm going to kill one world. I'm, I attack him head on. The light sound of impact. The knife pierces into his center. Twisting his lips in a grin, the vampire laughs voicelessly. This cannot be. Numbly, the black beast starts to crumble from his fingertips. You are my death. His body temperature rapidly dwindles. The end is instantaneous, like a dropping curtain. With this one attack, along with the remaining 560 beasts, chaos is annihilated. I'm exhausted. I collapse onto the ground. I fall on my rear and try to keep my body up with my hands. My right hand finally lets go of my knife. Cold. I'm cold. The pain is numbed. It almost feels comfortable. My body is ripped with canine bite marks and beak marks. Well, there's no mistake that I'll probably die like this. Shiki! Arkaway's voice. Run, you're getting targeted! Arkaway shouts as she dashes towards me. Huh? I stare up at the night sky as I sit. There I see a white moon and the figure of a blue crow. It screams as it falls straight towards me. It drops down to pierce my brain with its sharp beak. I try and stand up to escape, but my body is at its limit. I try to stand, but only end up collapsing on the ground. Because I fell on my back, I get a disturbingly clear view of the crow. It dives just like a bullet towards my face. And with the sound of sliced flesh, it dies right before my eyes. The blue crow was impaled by a flying nail, which looks like a large sword. It had come from somewhere above. I look up at the night sky. There is the white moon. There is someone dressed in black, priest-like garments. The figure stands on the streetlight and stares down at me. Despite just being almost killed, I vacantly think those high lace boots look really cool. The figure doesn't say anything. 
the emotionless eyes resemble the sharp moonlight. Resembles the figure really resembles Senpai. I thought that was I, I thought that was Seal for a second. Is that not Seal? My mind swims. Come! The crow's death cry. And I close my eyes quietly. I keep bleeding. In my groggy state, I can hear Arkuite and someone else arguing. I cannot leave it to you! I will heal him! A horribly hostile voice. Don't do anything you shouldn't. This is mine, so it doesn't concern you. Arkuite sounds the same too. She sounds the same. But I wish you wouldn't selfishly make me her object. Yes, this certainly doesn't concern me right now. However, I do not think you can heal such wounds. All you can do is watch him die. Or do you intend on making this young man one of your subordinates, Arkuite Br Brunstad? Do you think I would do such a thing? I can hear more than hostility in their voices. There's so much tension that I expect another fight to the death to start. Then please be quiet. With those wounds, he cannot last long. I really hate you. You should just disappear before I kill you. I really hate you as well. You don't need to tell me anything. I plan on leaving once his wounds are healed. You yourself should disappear before I kill you. I can't stand seeing you around. A conversation full of tension and hostility. My mind goes totally blank. Hard. Yeah, it's hard. I feel something hard against my back and it causes me to wake up with a start. Uh-huh. Arcoid? I look around. I'm in the park lying on a bench. I look at the park's clock and it's past one in the morning. Guess it hasn't even been a full hour since then. Arcoid looks at me wordlessly. Or maybe it's more like a glare. Arcoid? Arcoid doesn't respond. I don't know why, but she seems really angry. There. There. For now, I stand up. Oh, my wounds are healed. I was so bloody and cut up, but there isn't a single scar anywhere. There isn't any pain either. As if my fight with, um, was all a dream. But that was no dream. Then this must be... Arcoid. Don't tell me you use another part of his body again. No, unfortunately not. It would have been a quick fix and it would have been a quick fix and you would have gotten stronger with it too. But since you killed him completely, we can no longer use his body. Really? I guess you healed me in another way then. Wow, I really am back to normal. I don't feel pain or dizziness. Just how in the world did you do it, Arcoe? I don't know. I wasn't the one who healed you. She exclaims and looks away, displeased. It seems that's the reason. But if she wasn't the one to heal me, then just who did? Ah, there was. There was another person. Someone who helped me. That woman in black garments who resembled Senpai far too much. Arkue, where is that person from before? Still looking displeased, she looks away and ignores me. Hey, Arkue! I'm asking you what happened to that person from before. I don't know. I didn't see anyone. She turns around and pretends not to know anything. Hey, you just said you weren't the one to help me. If it wasn't you, then who else could have done it? Oh, enough already. I said I don't know, so I don't know. Oh, it seems she's taking it out on me. In the first place, why are you so interested in that person? It doesn't have anything to do with you, right? It, there is something. It was dark, I couldn't really tell, but that person looks like someone I know. That's just a coincidence. Just forget about that person. If you talk about it again in front of me, I'll get really mad. Ending quickly, she looks away. Why are you so angry? I should be the one getting angry. I just want to know who that person from before was, that's all. Fine, I got it. I won't ask anymore. Besides, our partnership ends here anyway. Huh? Isn't it obvious? We defeated the vampire who did as he pleased in this town, so my responsibility's gone now. I have to get back home or Akio will yell at me. I think it's about time to cut it off, Ar Arukai. Huh, you're right. Now that you mention it, it's already this late too. Arukai nods. Alright. I also nod in understanding. 
I nodded understanding, but there's still something lingering. As if I regret parting with her. That's ridiculous. She's a vampire and I'm a normal human. You're not fucking normal. If I associate with her anymore, something will happen that I can't take back. Bye, Arakite. Raising a hand, I step away. Um... There was a lot of horrible things that happened, but it was pretty fun too, so take care of yourself. Yeah. It is late and you have to get back home. Good night. Till next time, Shiki. I think she just said something odd. I try to say this is the last time, idiot, but I stop myself. Well, there are a lot of problems, but she is quite an interesting person. I speak as if I'm trying to convince myself, but it's the truth. So even if it's just once in a while, I feel like if by some chance we got to meet again, it wouldn't be a bad thing. I return to the mansion. It's about two in the morning and there's not a single light on in the mansion. I have to sneak in. I climb over the fence and into the garden. Fortunately, the door is open. I'm able to enter inside without waking anyone. If the door was open, then they might be waiting for you. Oh, they're not. I get back to my room and take a deep breath. It's over. I truly feel all the events past three days. All the strange things are actually finished. Well then, time for bed. I sink my tired body into bed and fall asleep. Or at least I intended to. But I just can't sleep. My mind and body are tired, but I can't stop thinking about that figure and I can't sleep. It couldn't have been Senpai, but... But she resembles Senpai so much. I couldn't get a good look at her face, but I saw I can't say for sure. So I think it's just my mistake. Tomorrow, I'll ask her at school. Yeah, that's right. I can see her at school anytime, so I'll ask her then. Then she could just say, that wasn't me. And it'll be all right. All right, that's what I'll do. It's decided. Now then, if I just read a boring book, I'll probably fall asleep. Immortality. If those words are to be grand reality, it would be one of the things which would define eternity. But in reality, nothing in existence has reached that level. For example, those vampires occasionally spoken of in legends are not immortal. After all, they are defective because they require stealing from others to exist. Furthermore, the fact that their supplemental parts have to be of the same species in this case, generally referring to humans, means that they are not versatile at all. They call themselves a transcendent race, but that's not evolution, it's degeneration. That which cannot function independently in perpetuality cannot be called eternal. It is presumptuous to call something immortal if it depends on others to halt its aging. There already exists something close to perfection which can function independently in perpetuality. It feeds on itself and multiplies. It has no such thing as a lifespan. Old cells become food as nutrients and new cells are produced from it, such as a jellyfish. However, it is perpetual only because it has no intelligence. If having no intelligence is fine, then it is no different from gaining eternity by death. If you want to be eternal living as a human, it is impossible by the method of immortality. Long years destroy the body and wear away flexibility of the mind. Immortality or eternity. I have no attachment to stained immortality. Persistently maintaining individuality makes eternity unattainable. Instead of gaining immortality as a single human, I chose the infinity in which I can continue to exist etern eternally. I see. Certainly a different approach than I. However, with your method, will you not lose eternity at the extinction of the human race? Your method always requires an unborn child other than yourself. This nigga Kenjaku? Is he jumping bodies? Yes, that's true. But if no other humans existed, I would not be able to confirm my own self. So if humans became extinct, then continuing to live in the world would be worthless. At that point, my immortality would end. I do not understand your theory. That is far from the thesis of immortality, serpent. No, it is eternity. When a time comes to perish, everything should perish. If observers cease to exist, then that means everything is unchanging. The eternity I embody is temporary until that time comes. I cannot turn everything into nothingness. Therefore, I will continue living until that happens. Although, I have found yet another amusement. Is that why you called me? Yes. 
I will show you a mystic method which allows you to slightly shape what is inside of you. There's something I wish for you to catch using this achievement from the age of the gods, Chaos. Woo! The serpent guy seems like he's going to be a bit of trouble. It's not like I'd lose, though. I'd win. But, man, that's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll read them off to up into the next one. It seems like... Man, okay. Hella eventful. I'm glad we got that nigga dead, though. It seems like Shiki just kind of goes crazy when he's in, like, intense pain. Like, when he gets a badass headache, he just kind of goes crazy. But I wonder how much control he has over that. Like, we saw when he was fighting the black nigga that, you know, he had enough control to focus only on him and ignore Arkuai. You know, just consider her a supporter. But, like... Would he actually have killed Arakai if she, like, tried to fight alongside him? Like, would that have happened? Like, that, like, that's, that's what's confusing me. That's what I'm so curious of here. I didn't mean to do that. Peace out. I love you guys. Tap into the next one. I'm really enjoying this game. I hope y'all are enjoying the series.